Hello, friends. Today is uh, Wednesday, February 17th, and it's the first day of Lent. We will have an Ash Wednesday service this evening in the sanctuary at 730. We invite you to come in person, register if you could. Um, I'm sure there'll be uh, space available if you forget to register. But we will also be online tonight at 730 for our Ash Wednesday service. I wanted to say thank you to all of those who uh, made this last Sunday a meaningful and significant day, not only for Jason and his family, but for uh, our community of faith, our family we call Elf and Wild Church. It really was uh, a good day to send off Jason and the Rays into a new chapter, and I know that your expressions of love and support to them Uh, are meaningful. So thank you for that good send-off. I wanted to say a quick word about a youth ministry and how it will continue. Uh, I met with the confirmation class last night for the first time with these uh, three uh, young ladies who are preparing to make their profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And uh, I ask that you would pray for those three young women as we uh, move forward in their journey. Also, For the junior and senior high kids, um, this Sunday, February 21st, we will have a youth group meeting outside on the back hill of the church to have sled riding. So at 4.30 on Sunday, bring your own sled, bring your own hot chocolate, uh, dress warmly, and come on down to the church and we'll do some sled riding and maybe do uh, some other things with the snow. Somebody mentioned a, a, a snowman building contest or something like that, but we will be safe and keep our distance from one another. Uh, but we thought that being outside and having activity would be uh, helpful in this uh, season. So know that that's happening. And also tomorrow night, the youth leaders and I are meeting together to continue to plan Uh, youth groups for each Sunday and what will be happening. So look forward to receiving uh, that news uh, on your emails. We'll send things out and keep you in touch. Uh, Another thing for the youth, on Wednesdays, beginning next Wednesday, February 24th, there will be a uh, Bible study, a small group Bible study that Bethany Harbaugh and the other youth leaders uh, will facilitate for you, and it will be online, and you will get that link so that you can participate. It's for junior and senior highs, boys and girls. We hope, uh, the young people, that you will participate in that and uh, be able to study the Word of God together and uh, share with one another God's truth. Adults, likewise, Wednesday nights, we will be having Uh, a Bible study also online via Zoom through the season of Lent. In fact, we'll be studying the same Psalms that the youth will be studying. We're using the same materials. So there will be a link sent out for you as well. So that link will probably come out next Monday or Tuesday and be on this email list so that you can join these meetings on Wednesday nights for Bible study. Also included in that link, uh, in that email, will be links to the new Sunday school classes that will begin soon. Ted Wood is going to be teaching through Exodus, and Bethany Harbaugh is going to be teaching through the book of 1 John. And so it's a new beginning, a new opportunity. If you haven't been in adult Sunday school for a while, this would be a great opportunity uh, for you to join in. So I hope that you'll do that. Let me remind you again that um, this Sunday for worship, being the first Sunday of Lent, we will observe the Lord's Supper. So prepare the bread and the cup in your home if you're there. And if you can come and be present with us in the sanctuary, we would just love that. There is plenty of space. It's very safe. Um, It's a little chilly at times, but it's endurable for sure. I hope that we'll see you in worship sometime very, very soon. I wanted to say just a few words on this season of Lent because I think it comes uh, at a really opportune time for us in our history, right? It's been a year almost now since we have entered this pandemic season uh, and since we have been sort of isolated from one another. And that time of isolation is very challenging. 
But Lent is made just for that in some ways. The season of Lent is modeled after the 40 days that Jesus went into the wilderness, the desert, to be tested and tried and prepared for his ministry. So I want to make that connection for you right now. Do you feel like you're in a desert experience or in a wilderness time? Are you feeling isolated from others? Do you think that your life and your faith is being tested in any way? And perhaps there are also then temptations and trials that you're facing. So this season of Lent addresses uh, this very reality in our lives. Again, Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days to be tested. And in that uh, passage of Matthew chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 4, it shows us that there were three separate occasions specifically where the devil, the tempter, evil, came and confronted Christ and asked him to turn away from God and turn toward his own power, to turn away from God and to seek things for his own comfort and his own pleasure. There were three temptations along those lines. Each time Jesus responded to the temptation with these words, it is written, it is written. And if you go back and look at Matthew chapter 4 or Luke chapter 4, and you find the the source of what Jesus quotes, believe it or not, it's the book of Deuteronomy. All three times, Jesus quotes the book of Deuteronomy. And these are the three things he says as he confronts temptation. He says, it is written that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That man does not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so I want to encourage us, particularly in this season of Lent, since we have time, would it be good to pick up the word of God, the Bible, to read it and to know it and to find truth and grace, to find encouragement and strength in God's word for us in this season. So I invite us all in this season of Lent to open up our Bibles and to make it a daily discipline to read through scripture, to study it, to learn it, to take it into our hearts and our minds and allow God to be real and present in that way. The second quote from Deuteronomy, when Jesus confronts the temptation, says, It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, don't challenge God. Don't test his patience. Um, Allow God to be God. Be faithful, be obedient, understand that he loves us and cares for us. Don't question that. And then the third response to the temptation is, he says, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And I, I, I really want to, us to take those words to heart and ask us and invite us to remember that our allegiance, our hearts, our devotion belong to the Lord first and only. He's the one worthy of our worship. So in this season of Lent, make the worship of God a priority. Not just on Sunday mornings coming together, but in your daily life, turn to God and give him praise and offer him thanksgiving for all of his blessings. I know that we feel like we are without many things in this season, and we are. We're missing the gatherings. We're missing the social interaction. But still, the blessings of God are very present. So ask for God to give you eyes to see those blessings. And in return, may we give him the praise and offer him our worship, for he is worthy of that worship. God is faithful. So in this season of Lent, know that Jesus went through desert experiences had wilderness times. They're not foreign to him. 
And it's interesting that throughout God's story in Scripture, uh, the wilderness and the desert are often places that are used to form people's character and to fine-tune their integrity and to really challenge and invite them to worship and trust in God, not in themselves, not in the world's answers, but in God's truth. So in this season of Lent, I invite us all uh, to take the opportunity uh, to turn toward the Lord, not away from him, and to let him minister to us. In many ways, Jesus went out to the desert in the wilderness and had to be ministered to by the Spirit of God instead of the things of the world. Perhaps that's where we are. Perhaps we just need to be a little more dependent or reliant upon the Holy Spirit rather than the things of the world. That's exactly what the season of Lent is about. Finally, as I've reflected on that just a little bit, I've realized that as much as I can grow spiritually, uh, I can never be as faithful as Jesus was. And so I'm reminded of my need for Christ's righteousness for his sinlessness, for his faithfulness to the Father. And I thank God that I can be found in Christ and that God sees me and us through the lens of his son, Jesus, and all that Jesus did for us. As we move through Lent to Holy Week, we will climax our understanding when we meet together at the cross and then celebrate the empty tomb and proclaim that Jesus is Savior and that Jesus is Lord. No one or nothing else is our hope. He is our hope. He is our salvation. May we be encouraged by that truth in this day. Friends, I do hope that we will see you soon and that you will be comfortable if you're getting vaccinated, if you're just uh, uh, more confident in the safety that we are uh, following here at the church. In any case, we love that you join us for worship online. We love being together in the spirit of Christ, but we do miss you and we do love you. If there's anything we can do for you, please reach out. Let us know how we can serve you and know uh, that uh, we're here for you. So I pray that you will know God's presence with you today. God bless you. Take care. We'll see you soon.